r slash pro revenge use me and abuse my horse good luck keeping tenants story by y e your last ha enjoy in november of 2017 the barn where i kept my horse was struck by a tornado my horse bonus and the property owner's horse socks survived with no injuries but the barn our horse trailer and the winter's supply of hay did not Knowing there was no way we could afford or find new hay this late in the season, I started to call around to see if there were any stables with openings that could essentially offer pickup of the horses in the middle of a tornado wasteland. Found a seemingly nice couple, James and Carol, with a place only a few miles from my apartment in town that would come get them and then offered boarding, hay, and feeding services for $160 per month. Seeing as I'm used to zero dollars, this was a lot for me at the time, but I knew it was very reasonable so I said come pick them up. Also, it pays to mention that my brother's godmother boarded her three horses there as well and helps take care of the horses if James and Carol aren't available. Right away I notice a couple things after move in, one Carol has a drinking problem she likes to bring to the barn. Two neither James or Carol have any business being around a horse. They have had horses at least two decades and Carol still cannot saddle her own horse. James believes that you should be able to see a horse's ribs or it's too fat. I go out every day to clean my stall and check my horse, bonus, has been fed and to check on socks, keeping an eye out for anything out of the ordinary. Then I think in maybe, April, I get a call from James late afternoon, wanting to know if could get a hold of socks owners because he's broken his leg and the vet is on the way to put him down. I ask how this happened as I know Sox was turned out with James's horses. My horse was in a turnout area by himself. James says that it was too cold the day before so he brought Sox into a stall to stay warm the night before and he just found him with a broken leg. Right away this doesn't sit right with me because James doesn't pay that close attention to the horses. I go straight there after work. The vet has already been there and Sox is laying, dead, in the aisle awaiting pickup and James's dog is laying in between his legs literally eating him. I found out later that James said Sox broke his leg in the field, but he didn't want the blame so he drug him up to the barn with the tractor and said he was in the stall. I should have taken my horse and left then and there but I had nowhere to go as we were still looking for a house with somewhere to take bonus. Fast forward a few months and we start getting a lot of new tenants, mostly young kids and first-time horse parents hoping to get their kids into 4-H for the first year. I don't say much but I'm definitely watching what's going on and none of these kids are getting any type training or assistance from James and Carol even though they offer riding lessons for $25 per hour which basically consist of a drunk Carol yelling at James that he's doing it wrong. I offer to the kids' parents to work together individually to see where they are at, but inevitably, we end up doing a group work night twice a month. Before anyone asks why I did this without charging, I have a soft spot for 4-H and I really did not want to see any of these kids hurt. I thought if I could build them a solid foundation it would help them out down the road and hopefully keep everyone safe. Soon people start to realize James and Carol really don't know what they are doing and start coming to me more and more for advice. Some kids are doing well, some kids you can tell don't care one way or the other. I made sure to emphasize at work nights that with them being first year students, we would strictly be working on ground work working on the ground with your horse on a lead rope until I felt everyone was confident and capable before we started any riding lessons. Everyone agreed. As the weather started getting nicer, I was informed by James that his granddaughter Kelly would be giving riding lessons in congruence with my lessons. Kelly is only interested in contesting classes barrels and poles like you see at a rodeo, which is not for first-year kids that can't even sit a trot. I just say okay, but I will not move on with my lessons until I feel they are ready. Everyone agrees. Soon stories start flooding in of kids falling off, getting hurt, etc. I feel bad but what can I do? I've told them they weren't ready, I'm not the one giving the lessons, etc. About this time, I notice my horse, Bonus, is starting to look like he's losing weight. Not uncommon coming out of winter, he's a 20-year-old odd off the track thoroughbred, meaning he was a race horse before I got him 14 years ago, he's hard to keep weight on. So I start him on a couple vet recommended supplements that James and Godmother agree to add into my feeding regimen since they do the feeding as part of my $160 boarding fee. Lessons go on, I notice my horse is still losing weight. Fast. 
I call the vet again, tell him my horse's medical history, his current feeding plan which should have kept a pregnant mare fat and sassy and he said for his breed and age, it sounds like it could be stomach cancer. I'm devastated as we just bought a house and I was lining someone up to come put up fencing to bring bonus home. I relay this to James, Godmother, and Kelly and ask that they make sure they keep food in front of him 24-7 to see if he starts putting on weight or if we should go ahead with the cancer testing. They agree, whatever it takes. I made some vet recommended changes to his feeding plan again and make up some daily supplement packs in Tupperware containers labeled Sunday to Saturday. At this point I was still devastated about possible cancer, but also I had the same warning signals going off as when Sox broke his leg, I just couldn't pin anything down. On Father's Day Sunday, I went out to the barn and made up a week's worth of pack Sunday to Saturday. I missed coming out a couple days that week between working on the house, work, etc. I show up on Thursday, all of my supplements are gone except for Wednesday and no one can confirm or deny what happened to them or if my horse was even fed yesterday. I will admit at this point, I saw red. I stormed up to James and asked for an explanation. He couldn't give me one. He said that the boys were feeding. The boys were eight and nine year old brothers who were leasing a horse from him. I asked him why I was paying him to feed my horse hundreds of dollars of feed and supplements when he was pawning it off on two little boys. He said well it may have also been Godmother not feeding him. Right away I want to say that's bullshit. I confront Godmother and she said that James has joked about switching my supplements and says how they aren't important. He also has only been giving my horse half as much hay as he's supposed to get because James thinks he's wasting it on him since he looks fine. My horse did not look fine. He looked like a horse with stomach cancer. He looked like a before rescue photo. I'm still about 30 to 60 days out from having a fence and shelter for bonus to be at the house. I make a sign to put in my feed bucket explaining the importance of the supplements and the effects of misfeeding them. Now you may ask why I did not just start feeding him myself. I really wish I could have made the time to do that, but my house was about 30 minutes from the stable. With trying to get everything ready, there were days I just could not make it out there, so I had some of the parents from work nights on watch that he always had food, figuring this would suffice until I could get him out. The next closest stable providing hay was over an hour away. The next day I get a call from James. He has seen my sign and determined it is too much liability for him to feed my horse anymore and while he will not be reducing my boarding bill to reflect this, he will also no longer be responsible for feeding my horse. I get in the car and fly to the stable. Sure enough, I get there and there is a board zip tied over the food hole in the stall stating that no one other than me is to be feeding my horse. Godmother is there but would not make eye contact with me. Now I really lost it. I had a friend with a couple horses a few miles away from where I just bought my house. I called him in tears and explained what was going on and asked if there's any way that I can bring bonus there until we get our place ready. I didn't have hay to feed him, I didn't have a trailer to get him there, nothing. I just need some help. He told me to come get a truck and trailer and bring him there. Before I left I told Godmother to not let anyone touch my stuff and I'm coming back with a trailer. Less than an hour later, I am back and the barn is packed. Clearly word got out what was going on. Other than Godmother, I had been a boarder there the longest, plus I had been working with these kids and their parents almost a year. As I am pulling in, James starts gathering my stuff from the storage and tack room, trying to ask what's mine. I tell him, I know what is f***ing mine and I will get it before leave. I storm through the barn getting everything that's mine tossed in the trailer. Then I go in the office and grab some paper and write out a half-assed CYA memo that I pay stall rent at the beginning of the month so there is no money owed from me and any remaining balance I have should be put towards the stall bedding I owe for. I signed it, snapped a picture, and took it out and handed it to Carol. As I was walking away, she tries to follow me, keeps telling me to slow down and talk to her. I say absolutely not, I gotta get my horse out of this sh hole as soon as possible. She keeps telling me not to act like this because they can't take the liability of feeding him medicine. I turned and said, medicine? They're f***ing supplements. And as for medicine liability you give every horse out here their yearly vaccines, wormers, and antibiotic shots, I grab bonus to put him in the trailer and Carol tries to come in after me. At this point, I am screaming at the top of my lungs because I want these people to hear me. 
I told her to get the f out of my face, I was taking my horse which they starved even after everything I've done including a year of lessons to kids for free so that their stable looked good yet they could disrespect me like this. When I dropped bonus at my friend's house, he said thought he was going to die before he could make it to my place, he looked that bad. I was still considering stomach cancer because he dropped so much weight so fast, and I figured since James thought he was going to die anyways that's why he quit feeding him. I'm still really hard on myself about letting poor bonus get that bad before something got done about it. I just kept saying a little bit longer and it'll be okay. Don't do that. Whatever you can do, do it now. Here's where revenge starts. If you are still with me, bless you. I started to get in touch with the families I was helping. I helped one family find a place, my farrier had a stall come open. Most people didn't want to leave right away because Fair, which they'd been training a year for, was just weeks away. When Fair came around and I got to talk to people I didn't get to talk to previously. There were two renting families and two leasing families at Fair. Finally, straw that broke the camel's back, the two families leasing James's horses got disqualified at Fair because the horses were too thin to safely show. No one went back to the stable after fair, they all found somewhere else to go after seeing what happened to my horse and without me being there for free lessons. He lost five stall rentals roughly $225 month after boarding and bedding and three leases roughly the same price, plus me, totaling his loss to about $2,000 per month. Update on bonus, he is healthy as a horse. He put on probably 250 pounds since moving home and is stomach cancer free r slash pro revenge five hundred thousand dollars school pro revenge story by 111 roar enjoy this was popular as a comment so i figured i'd tell the whole story here obligatory not me but former co-worker i work for a rural public school the revenge story involves a female pe teacher who worked there with me my first year teaching she was the only health PE teacher that was there just to teach and not as a guise to get coaching job. Despite being a rural school we are a lot better off than surrounding areas because we have pretty high property values and so our athletic teams have super nice weight rooms better than the gym I use. Even though the PE teacher wasn't a coach, she used the weight room for her PE classes and would routinely get complaints from female students that they never used the weight room for training. PE teacher did a little dogging and found out it was because the athletic director ancient dinosaur that didn't value girls sports would only schedule weight room time for girls teams if boys teams didn't want it. PE teacher was understandably pissed and reported this to the state. The state takes Title X complaints very seriously and thus immediately decided to audit the school. While this is pretty nice, this isn't even the revenge part. The superintendent is super pissed about this and asks the principal to terminate her contract, fire her. She was tenured which means it is difficult to get rid of her. Site-based council, main decision-making body for lost schools, vote to reduce the number of health PE teachers despite student body remaining the same. This means the principal has the power to choose which person loses their job. Guess who he picks? The revenge is short and oh so sweet. PE teacher sued for wrongful termination of her contract. It is in court for about a year, sadly I don't have the details from the hearing, but in the end the judge sides with the teacher, that she was retaliated against for reporting a blatant policy violation to the state and awards her $500,000. To date this is the largest settlement ever given by our school system, which for a time was known for lawsuits. The board votes to have an emergency election to replace the superintendent and principal involved. The new principal tells the Soxist athletic director he can retire again. He is ancient, or he can be terminated. He chooses retire. So everyone involved lost their job. The end. Not related but additional revenge, after he was fired a student hacked the principal's Twitter and flooded it with lesbian porn. He ended up deleting it but not before a few good chuckles were had by all. Also because I know people will complain about it, this payout didn't come from the general fund. It came from litigation insurance. Our insurance provider hates us but agreed to pay her. Edit, I'm forgot the most important part, new AD gives all sports equal time in the weight room. You are an absolute legend for making it to the end. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that like button. And if you can't get enough, consider subscribing. See you around.